Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are taking a look at Redline CNC spindles. Many of you are familiar with the PWN CNC video series I did last week, and now I've been asked numerous times about the Redline version, which again, they're all basically the same, guys. I think many of you know that. But after doing some research, I did find some interesting things that I think many of you who understand what you're looking at when you do direct comparisons of what the way a spindle cable should be built, you'll understand exactly what I'm pointing out here. And once again, you be the judge on how you want to spend your money. We've got a video here called Unboxing and Installing My Redline 1.5 Kilowatt CNC. It's by a channel called Naughty by Nature. Let's jump right in, see what this gentleman's got. And this one. I don't know where it goes yet, but we'll figure that out. Oh, sorry. Dumb moment. Now, first thing we notice, we've got plastic plugs. That's up to you if you want to go plastic. I'm not a big fan of plastic. They wear out. Um, what we see here is manufacturing done to keep things in a PC related format. I mean, these type of connections are typically what you see on a PC power supply with the plastic Molex. And again, if we're grounding everything properly with double shielding, you're going to be usually just fine. We have no idea if these cables are truly double shielded. We have no idea if they're properly grounded. And we'll cover that more as we go on. But more importantly, when we look at what just occurred with the PWN CNC series and we see the similarities here, that's where you guys have got to ask yourself. And many of you have, and that's why you've reached out to me. So we'll cover some more details as we go. Oh, my eyes. Wow. There you go. Sherlock Holmes over here, I figured it out. So, that's how that goes. One cable into there, one to the next spot. So next, we got the machine flipped around here. And then I insert the fuse. So right here, of course, we've got where the spindle's power plug is. And many of you already see, we have something here that is questionable. And that question is, we have a four pin plug. A four pin plug is also used on the PWN CNC model. And I know that because I've received an email and it says, Vince, that's what I was afraid of. Attached are the picks of the inside of the connections of the VFD box. No grounding that I can see. Now, once again, just to reiterate, this is for PWN CNC. I wanted to compare the similarities and give you guys a direct image of what we see with PWN CNC on the inside. I have not at all seen inside the Redline CNC version. However, there are some direct similarities and that's why I'm pointing this out. Also, it looks like 16 gauge wire thick insulation inside the box, stepping down to 18 gauge wire outside the box. Does that seem proper to me? Well, let's look at what we got here. Now the rear of this unit, and this once again is the pawn CNC version. You can see by the yellow 3D printing uh, plastic here. The way that this is done, this is definitely uh, looks like double wall heat shrink, and we see some hot glue insulation there as far as binding everything together. So we really can't see how anything is wired. So for those of you who already own these units, you know what it looks like. I have to say, this is very well done on the inside if and only if we have proper grounding. We don't know about that. We see one lead here with this green lead, which is assumably a ground. Um, Coming out of this, we'll go back in. I want to point out again, you can see right here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see the spindle cables plug is once again a four pin plug. So that being said, we see this plug and then this plug over here is virtually identical. So the biggest question I have is how is this going to be grounded? And this is a question you guys should be looking at yourselves. So let's see how this is done. Let's hit play. Little fuse holder, pretty straightforward. Get out of the package, and that's what that looks like. Just gonna slide it right in there. I have no idea why they would not install the fuse from the so factory. Place. There's no pressure on that when it's shipping. Makes no sense. There Power cable. Maybe we can move faster. Back side of this. Okay, here's our spindle power cable. 
Well, I think you guys see it as well as I do. Let's see what he does. There. Okay, we see a green lead coming out of the cable. It looks like it's coming out of the connector, and it's then uh, the green lead's getting inserted in the connector. And the only thing we can assume by this, because again, we don't have one in front of me, I can't look inside it. But it looks like they're grounding it from the connector's housing. Now, I've gotten told uh, many times in terms of you can do this, and that's, of course, correct. You can do it, pending, of course, the metal housing is conductive, number one. It has no coatings on it. The ohms rating is correct, meaning three or under, because grounding in robotics should be relative to an ohms resistance rating of three or under. And then on top of that, we have to make sure that the female plug, once again, if we come back here, Let's just pull it back. This female plug is grounded on the opposite end, meaning inside the VFD enclosure, it would also have to be attached with a ground to this metal housing in order for this to be grounded. Why? Because we only have four pins. So when I get asked, Vin, why do you use five pins on your motor cables, even though there's only four leads on a bipolar stepper? Well, the reason we use the fifth pin is to allocate the shield drain. We don't see a fifth pin here. So we have to assume, judging from this cable, which once again we can see right here, we see the green lead coming out of it. That's completely unorthodox. You don't usually see that. I don't know how many guys bought professional cables, but you don't see that typically done. And it's mainly done because they, the manufacturer, meaning the Chinese assembler of these cables, the ones who actually assembled and did the labor putting these cable together, they had to figure out, well, how am I going to ground this? And that's what they came up with. Now, whether or not they were directed to do it or not, the question is, what do we know about the inside of this VFD? We don't know much, but we know looking at this, if we compare this to a PWN CNC version and we look here, we would have to assume that this ground cable, assume, and I don't like making an ass out of you and me, that this would be attached to the metal housing over here. And if it's not, and this is not conductive, you have no ground. So my assessment to anyone buying one of these systems is to find out on your own system how it's grounded. And meaning, I would definitely open this VFD up, and if you're not comfortable doing that, I would question them before purchasing one and say, how is this grounded exactly? I want to know how it's grounded. There's nothing wrong with you asking that, okay? This thing is supposed to be certified from a laboratory as far as safety. That's fine, but we want to know how the shield drain is grounded. So I'm just curious how this was done, and so are you. You should be, because you're spending your hard-earned money, and you should want to know that that cable's built right. So I would ask him. I'd say, well, on your spindle power input plug, the female plug that goes into the back of the VFD, how exactly is my spindle cable grounded? Now, I've done more research to help you guys out. So I came over here, and I found a short video. Once again, same plug. Same VFD, we can see that right here. I'm going to hit play. It goes from the VFD all the way to the spindle. Boom. Let's see if we can catch it. The main thing to remember here is that you want to... Come back. Right here. So there's no question this is definitely the shield drain coming into the VFD as far as trying to make sure that this connector is properly grounded. Now the question is, when I say properly grounded, the only way this will be properly grounded, once again, is if the connector, see if I can fast forward or come back a little bit right here, this connector, the screw housing where it's metal, would have to have no coating and prove to be conductive and register three ohms or under. This is fact. So, I'm curious how they did that. I'm really curious how they did that. I'm also really interested to know how a factory would accept a shield drain attached like this for safety, because that is completely unorthodox to see. To me, it does not look professional. That's my opinion, um, but that's the way it is.
So I'm questioning that. I would say, ask them those questions. You have every right to do that. It's your money. So looking at this, we know that this is the same unit we just saw. So we're getting consistency now. The other thing I want to point out, because again, I'm not one for a line of bullshit that we've seen, because we've seen a lot. Many of you have seen it too. When we look over here, this gentleman also is another red line user. And again, we see the same background. And I, I want to point out things that many of you already notice, how many of these guys all have the same shop atmosphere. All their tools are hung nicely. They're handcrafted by Trey. They always have their channel up. And they tend to become more like an HGTV star. I know many of you have seen that. We, we in YouTube land seem to lack people being genuine in themselves. Hey, this is what I do. Check out what I do. We don't see that much anymore. Now we see people trying to be, you know, Chip and Joanna Gaines. And that's what this entire community has been. And it's something I think that should change. You know, you shouldn't have to be a Hollywood star in order to say, this is what I do. I'm good at my craft. Check me out. And that's, I think, something that's my own pet peeve. But I know many of you feel the same. Perfect that I kind of have to break it down. We have the VDF itself. Now, in all fairness, this guy did say in the beginning of his video that he got the VFD incorrect throughout the entire video. He's got a lot of other things incorrect. He calls his uh, drag chain a dog chain. So I don't know where, what's going on. He's only got 549 subs. So either way, we know he's a new user. Solid. Let's it's just look for consistency the spindle, on these cables. 80 millimeter spindle, power cord, the VDF to spindle itself. And then we have... Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see a green lead once again right here. And I'll pan in so you could see it. So we see a level of consistency. Now we've got three, three different channels, three different cables, all reflecting the same thing. You guys will be the judge. But in my opinion, I have never seen a cable built like that. Not with an exterior ground attached on the outside. I'm just telling you the truth. So you accept what you accept. But many of these systems that we're seeing are falling within this realm. We don't know what happened with PWN CNC. You don't know what happened with Redline. I doubt we'll ever know the exact truth. I mean, let's be real. Companies split for various reasons. But in this industry, let's be honest, most of the time, if something happened and they rubbed somebody the wrong way, funding isn't right. What I find interesting, though, like many of you, is just how close and similar these units are. I mean, they're virtually identical. And anyone that searches online, you'll see that. But now looking at these cables and seeing what we've seen here, I mean, there is no doubt in my mind they are all doing the same thing. I mean, you can see that here. We see it here. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm glad we have these images because, once again, not my channel. I didn't buy one of the units. I don't have one torn down in front of me. But you guys can see. And in this way, you make educated decisions. Decisions that matter. Not looking at the unit from the front and all the other typical marketing bullshit where somebody just shows you one side and says, oh, look at this. It's great. No, you should know what you're paying for. And that's something that, once again, the YouTuber influencer attitude is I'm going to show you me connecting everything because it'll get a lot of views. The beauty of that is you really do get to see as long as you have someone that can educate you on what to look for, what makes sense and what doesn't. So now we know. One other thing I want to show you before I leave, because I still get asked all the time about grounding, is this channel is called Dork in the Garage, 991 subs. And once again, we're back in that same garage atmosphere. This guy's using a masso all over the place. But here I want to draw your attention to this green lead right here. Now let me show you something. Top bit is this. Top bit is plastic. And then there's a fan under here. So it wasn't immediately obvious where to attach the ground wire inside here because it's not really attached inside this four pin connector. So I did it external back to here. Uh, it's grounded, so we're good. Well, I'm curious, like many of you, the gentleman just said it's grounded, it's good. If you guys look carefully, 
at this, you can see that this mount for his spindle, like many mounts for their spindle, it's anodized. I'll put it on screen. You already know, most of you, if you follow my channel, what anodized does. It's an insulator. So this gentleman where he says it's grounded, is it? If it's an insulated piece, how is it grounded? He also didn't state that he validated this for the correct ohms resistance rating so that it's grounded. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is whenever you guys are doing a lead, I don't know why these guys are all, they're using splices. We don't use splices. You should have one direct lead as a ground. Splices have problems. The more connectors you have in a loop like that, you're adding more resistance. And on top of that, you're adding more potential for problems. And that's something that you have to take into account. All of this should have been one lead. And then this should have came over here with a ring connector. And that's why I prefer soldering. Soldering done properly with flux and the proper technique assures this cable lasts forever.